So I'm going to do a short tutorial on uh, my approach to night lighting, um, lighting <laughs> night exteriors. Excuse me. Hopefully this is recording. Okay. So let's take a look at this setup. We have a, a an actor who's going to be uh, photographed in a. Whoops. Let me readjust my angle here. An actor who's going to be photographed in medium shot in an alley, and we arrive in the late afternoon, wait for it to get dark. And then the first thing to do uh, for me usually is uh, ask the director what the, is the widest shot that we're going to see in this direction. <clears throat> and then once I know that, I know where I can hide my lights. So I'm told this is going to be the frame. It's very important to push your director to define and finalize the choice of the frame before going to work. This way you know where the lights can be hidden. Everybody knows what's going to be on camera uh, you know, with respect to set dressing and all of that, where they can stage their equipment and be out of frame. So that's a very important thing for a director to always have on their mind is <clears throat> let me get the next frame chosen as soon as possible so people can get to work. So that's the frame. I wait till it's nighttime and I basically uh, illuminate the set using two instruments, which I'll show you here. Um, basically two spotlights. Oops, I didn't mean to move the building. You can see two spotlights here. One is lighting uh, one side of the, the alley and making a kind of cool reflection in the, um, what should we call it, in the uh, tiles on the set here. Kind of like that. And the other instrument is doing the same thing to the other side of the alley. So I found a, a brightness level that I found pleasing on the two of them. Let me go back to what I like. Somewhere around here. So now essentially my set is lit. I add a little smoke and that um, keeps the, uh, gives a little atmos atmosphere and um, does cut down your lighting bill because you, by lighting the air essentially, you're lighting the par particles floating in the air. You're eliminating a lot of uh, really, really deep shadows and uh, parts of the frame that have no information that would otherwise be just black, so it creates a little bit more visual interest. Uh, sometimes, depending on the style of the picture, we can put a little haze into the atmosphere. So let's now go and concentrate on different ways that you could light your foreground talent. Um, let me get down to a better uh, view. And you can see what's really happening here. Okay, so here's my talent um, <clears throat> and, and with no lights on him at all. They're just in position. They haven't been turned on. Here, I uh, just added uh, one backlight, which is this light right here. And as you can see, let me right, right, dim it. Yeah, this one backlight is outlining his uh, right side here. <clears throat> From our perspective, right side, his left side, I guess, and it's creating this uh, highlight on his cheekbone, illuminating the tip of his nose, and the bounce card in front, which is turned on. Uh, it's a light actually, but right now it's just acting as a bounce card. It's returning a little bit of that backlight, it's bouncing off of it, and, and illuminating his face just a bit. As you notice, he's no longer full silhouette. You can see the sunglasses. Um, if the director insisted on seeing more of the actor's face, you could bring a key light in <clears throat> uh, and you could add a, you know, however much or how little you want to of a, a front pr frontally positioned uh, key light to uh, allow us to see a little bit more into the shadows. So you might opt for something like that. I don't know. It depends. The next option is showing what, you, what front light looks like in a night exterior. It looks very odd. It looks like you're shooting a comedy or a, a news broadcast or something. It's very flat and it doesn't have any sense of nighttime light. So we rarely use front light at night at all. Here's an example of top lighting. In this instance, I've now got the, um, the actor's key light is above him here, you can see. And uh, depending on how narrow or how broad or uh, broad it is, you can uh, get different effects essentially. 
Uh, here's the example of the next slide. Side lighting. Now the actor is uh, <coughs> getting a light from the side, from this uh, large soft light. Let me get our perspective changed again so we can see a little bit better. So now, yeah, he's being illuminated by the side by this, and you can decide how back you want it to be or how frontal uh, you want it to come out from the actor. Um, but generally, we keep it to the side again to kind of keep some blacks and darks in the frame and to make it a little more mystery side keying people. You can certainly key, side key him from the other side just as easily. That's what this next slide shows. The, side, the soft light just moved over to this side with his, him. Uh, the next slide shows what, you know, if you key him from underneath, like an old horror movie, uh, it would look like this. So let's say you do this shot and the director suddenly says, uh, okay, I want you to go behind him now, put the camera behind him, and get a shot of him from behind. Um, that's called reversing. Uh, and what I want to stress in this talk is the importance of the director shooting all of the footage on a night scene or a lit scene, illuminated scene, interior is this sort of thing. Shoot all of the coverage in one direction at a time. Shoot all of those shots consecutively. You need to do that for a very practical reason. Um, I mentioned to you before that the look of lighting is relative to the angle from which it's viewed. So for instance, look at this shot where you know the set is backlit and the actor is bottom lit. <clears throat> and um, if we were to suddenly turn around and put the camera behind him, it would look like that. All of that backlighting uh, would become front lighting. And if we tighten up the frame, it would look like that. It doesn't look anything uh, at all like our, uh, our nighttime effect. You can imagine if you turned around, it looked like daytime, except with a dark background. So in order to really uh, to make this match the rest of the sequence, suddenly shooting in this opposite direction, you'd have to stop and take 20 minute break for the, the lighting crew to take these two lights, bring them way back over here to essentially reverse them so that they're back here out of frame somewhere hitting him, backlighting him in this new position <clears throat> uh, for, for this new camera angle, I should say. And they'd have to reverse all of the lighting on, on the actor himself uh, as well in order to get it to end up looking uh, correct in this new position with the same contrast ratio and the same look as, uh, as we had um, <clears throat> in the, uh, the, the last setup before the director asked us to reverse and, and get a shot shooting the uh, wrong direction. <clears throat> so can you imagine if he, if he then said, okay, now I want you to get a, a close-up of him, uh, you know, from here. So put the camera now in front of him. Uh, then the lighting team would have to go and reverse all that lighting and all of this stuff again, uh, going shooting uh, back and forth in two different directions. So very important takeaway from this lesson is always shoot all of your material in one direction uh, at a time before you go and start shooting in, in another direction because that's going to require your cameraman to, to relight. Okay, I hope this has been helpful. This is David Max Steinberg with another tutorial on uh, using Shot uh, Pro for narrative uh, storyboarding.